And here we are at one of the biggest events of the year, the Nürburgring 24 Hours 2021. It's a Wednesday currently right now and I've uh, just got to the track a couple of hours ago. Uh, we've just been doing radio checks and stuff and a little impromptu photo shoot going on with all the helmets on the cars together uh, with Chris, Ben and Jorg as well. Um, yeah, just all the systems and administration stuff done now. I'm gonna head back to the hotel in a second uh, and then have a team dinner this evening at the Ab, the Klaus, uh, the Frickadelli Ranch, which would be cool. Always have a nice barbecue and especially on such a nice evening, a nice day. Uh, it's to note that it's not gonna be like this the whole weekend, unfortunately. I think it's gonna be a bit of a roller coaster of a ride when it comes to um, the weather this weekend. So yeah, let's catch up a little bit later at the ranch and then when the track action starts tomorrow. and after 25 degrees yesterday the rain and cloud has arrived so perfectly timed for qualifying one there's three qualifying sessions which are effectively free practice sessions really and then the time qualifying and the shootout all happens on friday evening um you'll see on the car then we have obviously christian myself ben and york muller as well york is our uh, backup driver for the event so Three drivers, 24 hour race is pretty tough, especially at the Nürburgring. So if anything happens to any of us guys, we've got Jörg as a backup. But he is mainly on the 102 car here. Um, that's his priority for the event. So let's get to qualifying one and see if we can make it into the top shootout. It's gonna to be tough. So this is the weather that we're gonna be dealing with this weekend. This is now in between uh, qualifying one and qualifying two. So we've still got quite a number of hours before we actually get out to Quali 2. But uh, yeah, that big patch of rain is heading right for us. But then again, looking at the weather, it may hit us, it may not. So yeah, this is what we're in for definitely today and tomorrow. And then fingers crossed for the race, it'll be a little bit more predictable at least anyways, but we'll see. It's 11 o'clock Thursday evening, proper night run, and I'm going for uh, my light practice laps. So I've already done my two mandatory, but one to get my eye in for the night and then finish the day. So enjoy a bit of night on board, and then we'll catch up tomorrow for day two of the 24 hours in Nervo Green 2021.
bit of behind the scenes of what it takes to put together a team photo shoot. The event did a cool thing on the Friday evening. They did a tribute to the Queen of the Ring, Sabine Schmitz, who obviously unfortunately passed earlier on this year, um, by the Eiffel Blitz car that she drove in the 24 hours and won the 24 hours with, uh, driven by Johanna Scheid, the team principal, did a lap of honor in her honor around the Nordschleife and the circuit. And as you can see, um, everyone came out of the garage to, to applaud the occasion and it was yeah, amazing to see. So it is now Friday evening and uh, this is the weather that we've been dealing with for the whole day. Uh, qualifying three went well, all three of us got a run and managed to set competitive lap times. That means nothing now going into top qualifying one and top qualifying two. It looks like it's going to be dry for top qualifying one, I think, and then very, very wet for top qualifying two. So um, Chris is out for top qualifying one, he's got to qualify in the top four to get into top qualifying two and then from then on it'll be a top 20 shootout effectively so uh, yeah fingers crossed let's go do this you're only crashing it every day again So that is time qualifying one, finished, started in the dry, the guy's got two clean dry laps, literally as they're crossing the start finish line, a thunderstorm has appeared and literally the, the, the Grand Prix circuit is absolutely soaked, like waterlogged, yet the Nordic life is dry at the moment and uh, yeah, some guys got very very lucky there posting their times. Chris ended up P8, so we should be P28 starting for the race, not making Q2, I mean I'm all suited up and good to go, so yeah, pretty gutted that I um, won't make the top qualify for another year, but either way, long race ahead of us, um, yeah. let's catch up tomorrow for when it counts on race day. And actually looking at the top qualifying session, which is always one of the highlights of the year, I'm pretty glad I was in the garage. Um, my good friend Nick Yellowly managed to put the Rover M6 on pole and watching his on board is very impressive. If you can find it on YouTube then make sure you take a look. So much aquaplaning, so much sliding, just in a straight line, so much water and he nailed it to put it on pole. Well done Nick. Good morning from race day at the Nürburgring 24 hours and we are starting the day off right by a the brand new M4 GT3 car. And so at the moment we've got sort of private viewing for the Horst guys and gals. So Jörg's here and Jörg as well in the AM car. Um, and yeah, she looks mean. And she looks fast. Fanatec wheel that you can get on your sim.
we are, starting grid of 2021, 24 hours. Uh, I'm in for the beginning, feeling pretty nervous, I must admit. Um, feel like I want to set the race off on a good tone, good start. Starting P24, many cars ahead of us, down, down ahead, uh, but a long race ahead. And if you can see the weather in the background as well, I think it's going to be a real lottery as to what's going to happen out there for uh, yeah, the next 24 and a half hours coming up. So yeah, strap in, enjoy the ride, and I'll see you on the other side, hopefully with a mega result. So this is the first time I started the 24 hour race and we got held up by the sister car ahead of us, our AM car which ducked into the pit to put some wets on because the track is half wet, half dry. Everyone's on slicks at this point here and the, the guys behind us absolutely nailed us because they, they had the run and nailed us into turn one. However, this was probably one of the most exciting uh, lap ones and starts to the race. Um, so yeah, sit back and enjoy because yeah, I managed to make quite a few positions up from not only the starting position, but also from obviously the position that we dropped back to um, from the time we got into turn one. So enjoy. So it's been a pretty decent start up to this point here on the dry circuit but from Schwingkreutz onwards it would then start to rain and get wet and yeah just couldn't unfortunately keep up with the Michelin slick guys as they were able to hold a little bit more grip in these mixed conditions around me.
that was a half decent start, I just settled in and obviously long race ahead and knew that we wouldn't be competitive on the damp parts of the circuit so just tucked in behind the guys and yeah, wanted to complete my stint. Track was dry, uh, especially in these obviously damp parts where the foxhole is. Nice and dry on the way in here but then unfortunately disaster stuck. Nice and dry on the way in but then just damp bit of circuit or something completely caught me and a lot of other cars out just touched the barrier on the left hand side at Adenal Forst and unfortunately that caused rear left suspension damage. Of course auto addiction caught all the action. So that unfortunately meant a very long trip back to the pits with a damaged car and then into the pits for a rear left towing arm repair. Boys did a mega job to turn their car around nice and quickly, however we lost one and a half laps. While all this was happening, the conditions on the Nordschleife were changing drastically. So we elected to go out on the intermediate tyre with half the track being dry and half the track being absolutely waterlogged. As you can see here at the bottom of the circuit by the Breischau Bridge and now heading up towards Bergwerk. It's yeah, as wet as it's going to get and it was yeah, far too wet for the intermediate tyre. But then you'll see in maybe a kilometre or so's time the track is now completely dry. So it was really intermediate, in the middle conditions, typical normal life. It certainly provided a spectacle for the beginning of the 24 hours. This is now a few laps later and again you can see how quickly the conditions change. Now we're on full wet tyre so we've made a, change, we made a pit stop to change the tyres from intermediates to full wet tyres and um, obviously we lost a little bit more time in that as well whereas the guys were making just one pit stop there and the laps ahead which meant we did go down two laps unfortunately so that's where, where we, we were basically we were two laps down the leaders which is going to be extremely difficult to try and make back. And as you can see in the time I've been talking, in a few kilometres time, we've gone from completely dry circuit to, again, absolutely torrential rain and probably some of the trickiest conditions I've ever driven in. There was so much aquaplaning, it was crazy. You know it's bad when the left-hander underneath the bridge for the Dottinger Hoa is a brake and down two gears. And half a lap later on the Grand Prix circuit was exactly the same. Couldn't even accelerate in a straight line without aquaplaning and the traction control going crazy.
I managed to make the wets last long enough that we could then, our next pit stop box for slicks and we sent Ben out on the slicks to then again try and make the time up to at least be one lap down and then the weather prediction always was that there was going to be heavy fog which we could potentially make that lap back again under a red flag. <clears throat> So update of 11 o'clock, we are leaving the circuit. This is very familiar situation to last year. The fog has rolled in, red flags are out. Uh, I think the race stopped about 9.30. They waited one hour to update until 10.30, but then I think this, this fog's around to stay. So um, next information is six o'clock in the morning, which gives us the opportunity to go back to the hotel and get a proper night's sleep. Um, yeah, not much else to say really. I was so disappointed from the day before. Uh, I know how much effort the team had put into the car, the prep, everything goes into this event. It's the highlight of the year for Volcanor's team and also my co-drivers Ben and Chris. So I was massively disappointed and yeah, I just wanted to drive and try and make that time back up again. But with the conditions the way they were, we remained two laps down. And yeah, um, when there was only going to be a morning restart at some point until the afternoon, it was even harder to try and make that time back. So yeah, so, so disappointed. So, so sorry to the team and my teammates. However, the race restarted and we were still in it. So we pushed to make the Schramm, alles absolute klasse Fahrer, die du auf dem Werksauto so setzen könntest. Da sehen wir David Pitter, schönen Gruß runter in die Wagenhausbox. Also, Michele Beretta auf vier. Even with the weird fog and the strange conditions, we were able to go out on slick tires. The track was completely dry and uh, I completed my running for the race on the slick tires. like that another 24 hour weekend is done yeah bitterly disappointed really nice to get my confidence back in the final stint but ultimately we're never gonna make two laps back even with a red flag to help us so yeah unfortunately you only get one attempt this year Ben young man did very well this this uh, weekend what did you think to your first GT3 24 hours <laughs> uh, my first couple stints were a bit shaky but at the end of the race, I was way more confident. So yeah, loved it. Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to having Ben on board for the rest of the year. So yeah, next race action is the spa test for the 24 hours and then back here again for NLS4. So until next time, this time. <laughs>